Step one is the current reality, where you are. Step two is where you want to go, your desired reality, your financial goals. Step three is budget. And I know people just hate that word. Budget, budget, budget. But you do need to live within a certain amount of a journey. It's nice to say, oh, I want to do this, 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 but you've got a finite amount of money at the end of the month. Today we're speaking about, obviously, a salaried employee. So we're not speaking about side hustles and whatnot and whatnot. So we are speaking about your finite amount of money that you earn at the end of the month. Step four is to get out of debt. Because before you do anything, I firmly believe you should not be saving if you're still in debt. If you're still paying off debt, I know thousands of people will say, I've got an investment, this and this and this and that, but they've got debt. It makes no sense to me. Get out that, that first and then move to the light. You know? Debt, darkness, saving, light. Nice smile, let's see. I like pink, uh, purple, <laughs> number one. Uh, and then obviously, once you start saving, and ultimately, we're all gonna get to a point where we're old and gray and we need to set up for our retirement. So right now, you're working towards a retirement. Whether that's 60, whether that's 65, whether that's 55, whatever your age is, you need to build up enough money to retire comfortably. That is unfortunately the truth that we can't run away from. So your current reality, so we need to all understand the relationship that we have with money. Whether it's your mother, your father, your personal experiences, your friend, the society, social media, we all have some sort of relationship and understanding of money. And that is, you see when I was actually compiling this, I was actually thinking, look, I don't want to come across as like some guru of some sort, but we all need to get a level of introspection. There's no way you can say, I want to do this, 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 without actually thinking, what am I doing? Both right and wrong, because we do a lot of wrong things. And we also do a lot of right things, but we all need to start from an introspective uh, mindset. So we need to start, that you actually need to then sit down and say, Tepo, what are you doing? You know? At the end of the day, that's where you need to start. So number two is, where does my money go? Obviously, the stage has got, or the screen has got a large number of different things. We all have different types of expenses from month to month. So whether that's rent, whether that's parents, medical costs, entertainment, transport, whatever, the, whatever it is for you, that is for you. That is your stuff. So that's why I never say this is a financial planning. You must do one, two, three, four, five. Everyone is different. I'm just going to give you like an overview of tips of what you can do and what I've learned along the way. As I've said, I speak to different people. I learn every single day myself. So then this is where... <clears throat> This is where we can actually make impacts on our lives. Mm -hmm. So you see the, the previous screen. A lot of those things you can't avoid. Mm -hmm. You can't avoid paying for your children's school fees. You can't avoid one, two, three, four, five, whether that's cars, whatever, whatever. But some of these things, the majority of these things are things that we can reduce. Mm -hmm. I am not here to say cut off. At the end of the day, we are all creatures of habits. Mm -hmm. I like my brands, I like this, I like that, I like that. But the one thing I can say to you right now is to trim the fat. There's unnecessary fat that we that we actually baggaging ourselves on a day-to-day -day basis by saying, ah, Tepo likes La Costa, or Tepo likes this, or single malt, or this, 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 this. Things that we've actually created as a reputation to say, I am this Tepo that does one, two, three, four, five. So when you then say, ish, now I don't drink, whatever, I don't go to Tasha's, I don't drink, whatever sort of thing that you're doing. Now you wanna say, my friends are gonna think, ish, you know? My friends don't see me doing this. I don't go to Zanzibar. I don't do whatever. But at the end of the day, it needs to be, as I said, introspection. It's about you. You can't be keeping up with the Kardashians every single week. Whatever they do, you do. Well, you've got something that you want to do. You go, 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 go. Mara, when Porsche says, I've bought a car, what do you do? I know, I dropped this off. Let me buy a new car. When are you going to get there? There's no way you get to, you ever get to the end by you shifting your goalposts. So every single time you're shifting and shifting and shifting, eventually you don't get anywhere. Um, so yeah, this is one of those that you do need to think about. So we're all different. I used to smoke, uh, I'm, I'm trying to quit right now. Those are the types of things I'm speaking about. Whether you like food, you like takeouts, whatever, whatever you wanna do, I will say, do one, two, three. You know, hurry away, you're doing something wrong. And that is where you can build up this wealth that we're speaking about. As I said, you've got this 10,000 rand, whatever amount that you earn in a month. That is all you have. So your spending habits within the 10,000 rand is where you then create disposable income. So you don't go to, to the takeouts every single week. You don't do one, two, three every single week. You do it what? 
every fortnight or once a week, you know? So that creates an extra 300 Rand, an extra 500 Rand, an extra 1,000 Rand, and that accumulates over time. The one thing that we all want in life is this thing of, yo, I sleep today, tomorrow I'm rich. I can promise you right now, it's not gonna happen. It won't happen, though, Buffy. So, like, you know, unless you're playing lotteries or whatnot, it won't happen overnight. There has to be a level of discipline, a level of sacrifice that every single person makes. You can't have, you know, there's a, there's a saying in English, uh, have your cake and eat it. I don't know what it means, but I can tell you that. <laughs> you know what it means. But you can't have your cake and eat it. You can't have both sides of, 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 of the story. You can't say, I want to save, but I want to be a conquer every week. You know? It's impossible. You need to make a choice. Um, so, these are some of the introspective questions that I've actually put. So where does my money go, what I spend on treats, what I waste my money on, what is my attitude towards savings and credit? That's another one. Some people say, you know what, get pillar like one. YOLO. I don't care. You know, there are people like, you know, and you think these are mature adults and like, YOLO, I don't care. I want to finish it all. You know, and that does not, sorry? Yo, you know what I mean? I need to spoil myself, you know? So some of these things, you need to sit down and think about yourself. This is not Tepo saying you must do one, two, three, four, five. It's about you thinking about yourself, where you can cut the fat. Um, number two, or the step two, is the desired reality. Uh, that's where you want to go. I get where you are. We start with number one, where you are. Number two is where you want to go. So the financial goals, they, you know the, the saying says, it's not, it's not your salary that makes you rich, it is your spending habits. Uh, maybe perhaps not rich. Ne? Maybe I, I don't like this word, but perhaps not rich, but it gets you some way. It gets you financially well. So my company only speaks about financial wellness. I don't want to speak about wealth, 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 because wealth is a subjective thing. What is wealthy to you, what's wealthy to you is very different. But financial wellness is saying, my head is above water. I can walk tall in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the space. I can answer all private numbers. Some of the people here don't answer private numbers, 087 numbers, 012 numbers, because you got all. So that's the thing. You know right now, I mean, I'm not saying that I've, I'm at the perfect place. And number two, oh yes, that's another thing. I am not perfect. I still make mistakes that everyone still makes. As much as I do this thing on a day-to-day -day basis, and as much as I know all this knowledge. So when you stumble and fall, you must never just say, oh, I'm an idiot, get wrong, watch, 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 watch. You get up, dust yourself up, and again. And it's a re repetition of things that you're doing. It will never be perfect. I always speak about money and finances, almost like, um, uh, almost like, you know when you're dieting or trying to lose weight? You can't say to me right now, I'll drop, you know, I'll eat cucumbers one day and then I'm, I'll drop 30 kilograms. It's impractical. You need to then say, you know what, I've got a three month, two month, Five months, you know what I mean? Like it's something that is sustainable. You need to do every single day. It can't be just you no. Know, I'm remote is done one time, you know. So here, these are the goals. Yes, again, these goals may be different for everyone, but it's obviously things like providing for your family, saving for a car, education for yourself or kids, saving for emergencies, paying off debt. There's a large number of things that you can say. You know what? Kill it tap or kill it tell me. So this is what I want to do. You need to plan. But then they say, what, if you, if you fail to plan, you know what I mean? So at the end of the day, you cannot read something if you say, if you don't say, I'm gonna get it. So you have to get these things, write them down. Now, you know what? I know in the digital space, my boss always says, oh, it's Apple, you and your pen, pen and paper. Me, let me say something, I'm old school like that. All these apps and whatnot, I'm not saying they're bad, but ultimately, the pen and, the pen and paper that you're using is the same thing. You wanna say, no, this app will remind you what, 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 what. Ultimately, it is you that is making those decisions. Yeah. So you can use all these things. I'm not saying don't use them, but ultimately, just don't complicate this thing. It's very simple, but it's not easy. Let me repeat, it's simple. Simple, but it's not easy. To make those changes, it takes some time, it takes some discipline, it takes some hardship. It's so, ah, I hate this thing. You know what, let me go back to my ways. You need to actually stay, uh, stay steadfast. So here, I'm speaking about the fact that there is, this unfortunately cannot be a passive exercise. You can't just say, no, I've done it once and I leave it. It needs action and action and action and constant action. 
So if you feel, Jorge, I don't want to do this forever, then unfortunately, then the results won't be there. You can't sell a thing for two months and leave it and not be involved. It's impossible. There's nothing. If someone says that to you, they're lying to you. Straight up. That's a scam. Now I'm speaking reality in the sense that you need to be constant, you need to be deliberate. You need to say, baby or sweetie, this is what we are doing. You know what I mean? Um, so obviously you start your budget, you get out of debt, and you save for future goals. As I've said, it sounds simple, it is simple, but it's not easy. Uh, how much money do I need? Ish. Yeah, I, I get the question all the time, Jorge. How much must I save and whatnot? It's all up to you. You know, at the end of the day, each household, each person has got different types of things. But you need to review your current budget. So, as I've said, I don't want to complicate the budget thing. There's so many different types of budgets. Envelope, method, 50, 50, 20. What? There's so many different things. And a lot of people get caught up in the whole, which one? Just pen, paper, start. You know, some of the Stephen Bart was saying, just start. You'll make mistakes later. You know, just start. Get it, get it over, out the way. Do your stuff. And basically, obviously, with the budget, it's income versus expense. If your income is more than your expenses, you do well. If your expenses are more than your income, you need to adjust. Simple as that. Uh, look, this here is the small hacks that we say to people. Make these adjustments. We all know this. Everyone on here will tell you that you know what, you need to buy a grocery in bulk, you need to save, fewer cold drinks, fewer takeouts. We all know this. But we don't do it. And ultimately, that's what I was saying. Now, nah, I'm speaking about your finite amount that you earn. I'm not speaking about extra monies out there. So you've got this 10,000 rand, and I'm sorry, people are earning 100,000 and stuff like that. You know, <laughs> this 10,000 rand that you have here is all that you have. So that is where you say, I'm going to cut the nonsense. And I'm sorry to use that word, but it's nonsense at some particular point. Going to a takeout every, you know, I work from home a lot these days. But I know when I go to the office standards, there are people that go to the canteen every day. Every single day, 60 rand, 70 rand, 80 rand, every day. That's ridiculous. I don't even know how they, they balance their things. I'm not judging, but at the end of the day, can you imagine 80 rand times five is 400 rand? No? That's a week. A month is 1,006. Do you know what you can do with 1,006? So something as small as that, cuts cuff tea. You know, obviously, about make homemade lunches, we all grew up known as Kafti in the city. When you cook, you cook and put Kafti in. Like, I mean, who are you? What, what makes you better than having this Kafti? <laughs> like, it's, 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 it's at that level that we need to actually go, go down back to our roots. Because this whole Jorvik life, center life, whatever talk of life that we're saying, it is mine right now. It is not yours because you are derailing yourself. You are derailing yourself from this particular thing, okay? I am told that I need to speed it up, sorry. Uh, so this one here, you need to speak to your family members. You cannot do anything like this if you're not speaking to your family members. You need complete buy-in from your family members. Your kids need to understand that Papa is not doing this anymore, but they need to understand why. But when you say that, you cannot go buy a golf club or buy a new weave next week. It makes no sense. Uh, sorry, I'm going to need to speed up. Uh, how to become debt-free? So obviously, you need to actually assess your debts, have a game plan, and maintain your game plan. So you list all your debts, smallest to largest, monthly payments, confirmed dates, credits for, and look at, at your monthly expenses. So essentially, look, I was speaking about just saving that 400 rand a week, ne? 1,006. You then say, I'm gonna plug that 1.6 into my credit card. Every single month you're doing like this, every single month at 1.6, very soon, the credit card will be gone. That 1.6 plus the 500 rand, the minimum payments, is 2.1. You put it to the next and next, and next, that's literally what you're doing. It's not rocket science, this thing. But it needs quality, you must be strong here. No, seriously, you need to be strong, like you need to maintain that. Uh, yeah, that's basically, maintain your plan, because obviously you need to regain control of your finances. A lot of us, including myself, there's been points where my finances was just a mess. They were controlling me. I used to get a point where, at 25, 40, 24, I'm like, Sherbert, I hate PD. I don't want people to be hating PD. That's a day to celebrate and say, my money is coming in. Not to say, I hate this thing. So, look, at the end of the day, not, you know, I'm not saying debt is wrong. There's good debt, there's bad debt. Houses, big ticket items, you need to use debt sometimes. But try and avoid all these small, you know, debts, credit cards, whatnot, and whatnot. Those, a lot of times, they're for instant gratification. 
I want that thing now. I need to get that thing now. If you wait, you know now I was saying for the old school method, lay by. You are delaying the gratification, but you want to get that thing. There's no extra uh, interest that I'm, you know what I mean? So, uh, so look, a very quick thing. If you got a 500,000 rand loan, home loan, on 20 years, you're paying 9.5%, that's 4,500 rand. You should be paying around 1.1 million. Hey, but 500,000, did you buy this house? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so nonetheless, so if you put an extra 100 rand, extra 100 rand, scuffed in, or not eating this, 100 rand, you are saving 41,500 rand. It doesn't seem that much. But you're paying that off a year sooner. Let's go to 1,000 rand. And 1,000 rand you can make simply, just by cutting nonsense again. You are paying that off seven years sooner. Now, okay, the, the money is not that important in this. You are out of debt seven years sooner. Can you imagine that thing? Just by putting an extra thousand, and an extra thousand, you can make something. It's not like this huge amount that's coming from somewhere. It's not 50,000. So that is the, and obviously once you then get out of debt, you need to then start saving that money. I get it, this is where you want to be. There's no debt, now we've got this extra disposable income, and we're saving this money. So the saving itself, okay, so today it's not like a financial plan uh, exercise, but there are many vehicles that you can invest your money in. So you speak to a financial advisor, tax-free, unit trust, RA, there are many different types of things that will then get you money back. Now you get to a point that now the banks are paying you, not you paying the banks. That's a good place to be at. So you know what, wealth, to bring it back to what we we're speaking about, all this money that you now have disposably, you can now start looking at things like your side hustles or investing in whatnot, whatever thing that is, is suitable for you. I'm not going to say you must do one, two, three, four, five. That's not the purpose here. The purpose is to get you financially well enough that I've got this amount of money that, hey, what did I not pay? You know, like when you get to a point where what did I not pay? There's like 7,000 sitting here. What's going on? You know? So that is the, the space that I want you to be. So this is basically compound interest. Look, 50 rand takeaway coffee. You know, nobody coffee, mang mang, and all these things. Starbucks, you know? <laughs> uh, 50 rand per week, over 20 years at 9% interest, you would have got 145,000 rand. Some people buy that thing daily. I'm speaking about once a week. So that means you multiply that by five. I'm not saying quit coffee, I'm not saying whatever, but at least cut down. I didn't say cut off, cut down, trim. You see? Uh, so obviously there are different types of, of, of digital tools that we have. Um, you can go into our websites. There are so many different types of tools, financial tools. There are videos. There are so many things that you can actually use. Even though you may not be a member of Momentum, you can access this and find out information. There are tools, there are videos. There are so many different things that you can use outside of the space. Um, let me see if there's... So that is our contact details. We've got member solutions at momentum.co.za. The phone number there, okay, the please call me is a bit antiquated. So you can actually use the first two. So we can then speak with whatever language that you want to speak, we can speak to you. I am actually representing a team of my team. So you can speak whatever you want to speak about. We don't provide and say do one, two, three, four, five. We give you factual information across the board. And then you can take it from there. I've got about two and a half minutes left. Uh, any questions, comments? Yes, ma'am. I love the question. So you know I said to you the big ticket items like bonds and stuff. Sorry, sorry, um, to interrupt. you ask the question, please hold the mic, but it's your mouth. Alright. So those big ticket items, and then? Okay, cool. The question is, um, how do you not save when you've got long-term debt? Okay. So the question is, obviously, is based around the fact that you've got a bond. I've also got a bond, many people have got a bond. Some of the bond can't be taken away very quickly. So that is a big ticket item. I'm not saying, my main advice is all the stupid debt. The clothing accounts, the personal loans, the credit cards, that's what you target. But the big ticket items like car, house, 
you know, it will take a bit of time. So once you then start paying off all this stupid debt, you know, as I said, you take all that money that you're saving. So now you've got discipline. So let's say all this money right now, you've got 6,000 rand extra. You paid everything off. You, know? you then take that 6,000 rand and put it to the bond. It's not time to say, now it's time to celebrate. Hey, I can, I can blow. It's the discipline that you've actually learned. The, the, the habits that you've actually learned. You then need to persist on that. So that's why you can then pay off the debt in seven years. You understand? So the bond is not something bad. I'm not saying debt is bad of it. It's good debt. It's bad debt. But try get away because you know some of these credit cards are twenty seven percent, twenty percent. That's ridiculous. That's the first thing that you start off and finish it off. Because yeah. you can't be paying three fifty, three fifty, three fifty. What fits I mean? When are you gonna finish? So rather than start putting a bit of extra into that, so it gets out of the way, and as soon as it's done, cut the credit card off. Uh, any other question? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. I think just uh, coupled to that particular question. It's just oh, sorry. Oh, no. Oh, the microphone. The microphone. Yes. Um, I think just coupled to that uh, particular question, so if you've got a bond and then you've got, let's say, um, a tax-free saving, so um, <clears throat> is it advisable that, you know, to drop the tax-free saving, the money I'm putting into a tax-free saving, rather put it into a bond? No. You see, I, I don't like the word advisable because everyone does not have the same situation. But let me answer that, that, that question holistically. Ne? I'm not against, you see a bond. As I've said, it's a long-term thing. You can have the bond and still save on the tax-free. But I prefer not for you to save in a tax-free, but you pay 27% for a credit card. I don't think you get it. Yeah. So essentially, the big ticket items, because what, right? It's about 11%, 9%, depending on, on your rates for a home loan. But these other ones are 27% in ridiculous amounts. Finish that off ne? before you start the tax-free. But once you've got the home loan, you can start the tax-free because obviously you want to create a bit of of, 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 of rainy day money, mm -hmm. you know? But with a credit card, a personal loan, finish that off. That, that to me is my advice. That is, it's, you know, people are sitting in debt unnecessarily so. And the time is up, this music is starting right now. The next person is here.